Hey guys, it's Kat and I'm back today to do my first one week one palette review uh, of 2021. Now, uh, I haven't done one of these for months and months and months and months. I had a baby last year. It was really almost impossible to do a long form sort of uh, palette reviews, but I'm trying to get back into it this year. So I want to get at least one palette review done per month. So the one that I wanted to start with was by Nabla. I've never actually done a one week one palette review on a Nabla palette. Um, and this is one that is, I think their most recent release. I was sent this uh, in PR. So look, I'm using it months after I received it. But the reason I wanted to review this one first is because it's the palette that's been sitting there taunting me. I want to use it. I want to play with it, but I wanted to review it first. So this is the side by side nude palette. Uh, it came out a couple months ago. Uh, you can buy it on the Nabla website, Beauty Bay. I think it's around 45 US dollars, around 39 euros, I think, and around 63 or four Australian dollars, if you're wondering uh, the price of it. I will let you know at the end of this review you if I think it's worth the money and if I would pay my hardened uh, money on this palette. But the whole premise of these videos is that I use this palette for a good week or so. Um, I check back in with the looks that I create using this palette. I let you know what shades I'm using, what issues I have or what I like about the palette as I go. And then I conclude at the very end what I think about this palette after I've used every single shade in a look. So that's what I like to do. Um, and let's just show you the palette, shall we? Shut up, cat. Let's get to it. Since these are pretty long reviews, I do have timestamps in the description box so if you don't care about swatches or you only want to see swatches you can go in the description box and click on the areas you want to see um, but let's first look at the palette so it is a cardboard palette which is good so it's a little bit better for the environment it does have some nice foiled gold detailing um, you open it up it's a magnetic closure it does have a nice mirror and you can see here there are 16 shades there is this slip here what i love about this is there's some neutral shades there's a little bit of warm warmer shades going on but they do lean into the cooler shades so often with nude palettes they're very very warm toned or they're just straight up neutral um, it's very hard to find a good sort of balanced nude palette that has the cooler tones as well so at least with this there's a whole bunch of variety going on um, what I like about Nabla palettes in general is that they have a whole variety of textures so you have some sort of shimmers you have some more sparkly finishes so this one here and that one there almost look like they're not pressed glitters but they're very very sparkly i will also try to take a close-up of this palette because in my like view this one is gorgeous it's like a i don't know cool tone brown um with this sort of pur uh, purpley blue shimmer through it it's very, very pretty. This also looks like it could be a duochrome. Um, yeah, these ones look a little bit more standard shimmers. So before I get onto swatches, I do want to point out that this palette is made in Italy. Um, Nabla is cruelty free. I believe they're vegan as well. I'll have the details on the screen, but in total, this contains 12.2 grams of product. So um, over 16 shades, it means these are just under a gram per pan, which is probably slightly on the smaller side of eyeshadow palettes. But again, unless you're project panning and you're trying to use it up, um, this is probably enough to last you a number of years. The palette does look quite big, but you can see sort of it fits in your hand. So it won't be too, too hard to store. It's also fairly thin, so it is sturdy, but it's not uh, sort of bulky. All right, time to swatch the first row on just my bare skin, no primer. So this is the first shade. It's almost like that sort of typical uh, transition matte. It's very, very smooth and finely milled. This is a nice sort of champagne gold. So you can see it looks quite gold as an undertone, um, but it does have that lighter sort of uh, sheen to it. Another sort of transition color. This is a little bit more brown toned um, rather than peachy toned. And then we have this really pretty sort of rose gold coppery shade. This is quite metallic. Um, it could be applied quite sheerly as a little bit of a topper, but it is quite vibrant and really, really pretty. All right, onto the second row. The first shade does feel really different. This feels like, um, like a micro sparkle type shade. 
It's got an iridescent base, but it is a little bit chunkier than these other two, which feel a lot smoother. It does have this really pretty sort of, um, I don't know, peachy pink shift to it. So again, that's more of a topper shade. Then we have this metallic gold, which is really pretty. It's actually quite rich for a metallic gold. It almost looks a little bit bronze-like, copper-like. Very pretty. Uh, these two mattes felt a lot firmer than these two. They felt really smooth to pick up. This was a little bit, um, a little bit firmer in the pan, so pressed a little bit firmer. The lighting's going, sorry guys. And then this one, which is a darker shade, again, pressed, a, it was a little bit firmer to pick up. So um, that's the first two rows, really pretty. All right, the second two rows are more what I'm excited about. We've got more of a brown row. So this is a beautiful matte. Uh, it's like a red toned, rich, beautiful matte, really nicely pigmented, really soft. This is another one of those sort of glittery shades. Maybe it's a little bit um, smoother than that one on the, um, the pinky one that I swatched just before. This is that brown with a bit of a blue purple uh, sparkle through it. You can't really see it on camera, but it does have like these really fine purple um, sparkly particles in it that almost give it like a duochrome effect. So it looks brown, but then it catches like a cool tone sheen. It's really pretty. This is just a typical metallic brown. It's very rich. So it's got a lot, lot of red tones to that. Really pretty. And then we have a dark, once again, very, very sort of red toned, um, almost burgundy matte. Really smooth. That I swatched that with my little finger, which is like the potato finger. It always swatches badly, but that just swatched beautifully. These colors are gorgeous. All right, last row is that cool toned row. We have a cream matte. This one sort of looks like my skin tone. It's very soft, very pigmented. There was a bit of kick up in the pan when I picked this up with my finger. So very, very soft, not pressed really firmly. Just be careful with it, but it is beautiful. We've got this beautiful sort of slate, taupey um, metallic shade, which is I love it. I think that's so gorgeous. Maybe I'll use that in the look today. It's really, really pretty. Then we do have a gray. So this is almost um, a bluey toned matte gray. And then we have your traditional black. This is quite a nice black. Again, swatches really nice with the little finger. Looks nice and bold, uh, soft, easy to pick up. Uh, not as soft as this one, but you got a really nice cool tone quad, a really nice um, sort of warmer tone brown quad. I really like these. They're really, really pretty. I love this section of the palette the most. All right, I do like to show you the palette just after it's been swatched to see if I like dug my fingers in or if I really had to like move the pan around or if there, anything sealed up. Nothing sealed up. Um, the only thing that I, is worth mentioning is that there was a bit of kick up in that. So you can see, hopefully there's a bit of raised area um, and it did flick over to here. So everything else, um, not a lot of fallout, not a lot of kick up everything swatched nicely these two sort of shimmery sparkly shades i didn't need to gouge into them some sort of sort of sparkly glittery shades often dis like disrupt the pan a lot when you swatch them these are just perfect so there we go so if you are new here i do like to show how they apply in my first look when i do check back in like look three four five uh, etc i won't actually demonstrate it i'll just sort of check in and show you the finalized look but i do like to do the first one on camera. I have put a base on already. I put it on like four hours ago. So it's a MAC paint pot in painterly. Um, I did also powder it down just very slightly in the crease and it is completely set. So if I have any issues with the eyeshadow sticking to my eye, I might put a little bit more on just for a little bit of stick. But just to let you know, that's what I've done to prep my eyes. That was my sort of quick no makeup makeup look for today. And then I threw this lip on and it stop being a no makeup makeup look. All right, just to make sure that the crease has set properly and there's nothing that will sort of tug and budge, I am going with a fluffy brush and the shade Half Time, and I'm just putting that into the crease. This is actually quite nicely pigmented. It actually looks, I'm gonna say on the eye, a little bit darker than what I was expecting. It's not patchy, it's not sort of gripping weirdly. It just gives a nice sort of shadow in the crease, which is nice. Um, also, if you're new here, I do have a patch of dermatitis on my eye. So if things look a bit patchy in this area here, uh, that is my skin. It's not the eyeshadow. So that looks really nice. It applied really easily. There's no building up needed. It adds that shadow, adds that sort of base if you want to go in and do something a little bit more complicated. Otherwise, on its own, it's just like a really simple 
nude makeup look. So nice matte, no complaints. I do want to test on camera this shade here. It is that sparkly shade. I do have a feeling that this would work best on a sticky base or glitter glue, but I just thought for the sake of the video, I just want to test this out and show you what it's like. Um, yeah, it's not picking up well at all. So there we go. Maybe I'll go and get some glitter glue and just tap it on the lid and see how this goes. So if you do build it up a little bit, you can get something going on, but it's very, very minor and very, very sort of, um, very subtle, like fine. Subtlety is fine. Uh, but if you want to get that effect, let's see if we can get that with a bit of a stickier base. All right, I'm back with my Too Faced glitter glue, my trusty favorite. And I'm just going to put a little bit on the back of my hand and use a brush to just put a little bit on the lid. Just got a Sigma concealer brush here and I just want to put a little bit. I don't want it to be too thick. I don't want it to disrupt what I've already done in the crease. I just want a really slight sticky base for the shimmer to stick to well. All right, attempt number two. We're going again with that shade and it, yep, that sticks a lot better. So you can actually see the brown, you can see the sparkle, you can see that it just grips to the lid. Um, this is not you know, a sign of a bad eyeshadow by any means. It's just a sign that uh, you need a good base for this one to get its full effect. And that's very, very common for this type of eyeshadow. So these really like micro, um, fine, almost glittery, twinkly, sparkly eyeshadows. You need something for it to stick to. Otherwise it just sort of floats away. Um, but when you do get it on, it's really, really gorgeous. So I do recommend for people to get the most out of their eyeshadows, have a few different bases that you can sort of reach for because different eyeshadows sometimes require different things, but this is really pretty. I'd say this is, uh, reminds me a lot of those special shades in the Pat McGrath palette. So it's really nice sparkly ones. Um, same sort of effect on the eye and they also, sort of need a bit of help gripping to the eye. So no difference there. I am loving the tone of this. I love the brown. It's just like a nice, like flattering bronze that would suit a lot of different skin tones. It, whether you're fair, whether you're deep, I think anyone can use this. And because it does have that bit of purple shimmer in it, which I don't think you can see on camera, it adds a little bit of a cool effect to it. So it's not just your typical warm brown. It does have a little bit of a cool effect and it sort of makes it a little bit easier to wear with, I guess, all different shades. So whether you pair it with a gold, whether you pair it with the grays, it sort of works because there's a little bit of warmth and a little bit of cool there. So it makes it quite neutral, which is really pretty. I love this shade. One thing I do want to point out is if you do want to pick up this shade well on a brush, there is a bit of pan disruption. So you can see little sort of chunks are missing. Now I will do some sort of warm tone and cool tone specific looks. So I'll probably do um, sort of a look using those four. I'll probably do a look using those four, look using those and that traditional sort of pinky champagne, uh, nude look. I'll probably do a look using each different row, but right now I want to play. I sort of want to delve into these silvers. I don't want to delve into the gold. I sort of want to have a play with the different tones and see if they actually work well together in one look. So I'm picking up some, uh, cubism on a fluffy brush and I'm just going to put that in the outer corner just to see. You can see that this is, I think the brush I'm using is not the best. Oh yeah, typical. It's a bloody Morphe brush. Oh, I also put it over the glitter glue. So it's gripping a little bit. So I think that's more the base than it is the brush or the eyeshadow. Uh, I didn't even factor that in. I probably should have set the crease again with a sort of nude shade to prevent that, but it is sort of coping well. It's blending out pretty well, but you can see that it's gripped to the areas where I've put glitter glue. It's fine. It is what it is. Just taking a little bit of the shade Bonjour just to blend that out a little bit. I am finding it to be probably a little bit smokier than I expected. So uh, I'm using that sort of peachy transition caramelly nude shade um, just to sort of soften that a little bit. If you can see. Just to sort of connect the two, I am going to use that taupey metallic shade Love Ritual just in the outer corner just to sort of uh, meld the taupe and the gray and the brown together. I'll just tap it on and then I'll blend it out a little bit. This is really pigmented. This is standing out and sort of taking over the look a little bit and it definitely have a, has a good silver shift to it. So it does look a lot lighter than I thought it would because it's got that reflective 
silver effect, which I think a lot of people would like. All right, I've played around a little bit on the top row with some cool tones. I'm gonna to go Burnt Sienna just on a pencil brush on the lower lash line to sort of work in some warmer tones. Picking up a smallest bit at a time because I don't want it to overwhelm. I've got no primer on this lower lash line, so it is sort of sticking quite nicely and blending quite nicely. It gives a beautiful sort of red tone. Again, just a fluffy brush with a little bit of Bonjour on it. And I'm just going to blend that out a little bit just to soften it. Because I want to play with textures, I'm going to go on a small sort of detail brush, Paradiso, which is that gold. I'm going to run that mainly on the lower third, inner third. It's really pretty. That one applies really smoothly. doesn't need any primer, doesn't need any glitter glue. Just a really nice, and I love the dark gold. It's like a rich, coppery, oh, I don't know. It's beautiful layered over browns. I love it. It's like not your traditional sort of yellow, bright gold. It's more of a, yeah, it's a rich gold. It's like a 24 karat gold. It's really, really pretty. I've just wiped off that brush. I'm going to go in with Ray of Light, which is more of that champagne shade just to pop in the inner corner as a bit of lift a little bit of brightness bringing the top and the bottom together this sort of shade can be also layered over the gold to tone the gold down a little bit if you do want a gold tone but not that richness if you want it to be a little bit brighter uh, just layer this shade over it and it would just you know add a bit of brightness to it i like the shade so far i've lost the glitter which is a bit of a bum because i worked so hard to put it on so i'm just going to get some on my finger you can see hopefully the tone of it. It almost looks like the MAC Blue Brown pigment where it's got that sort of uh, very, very warm brown base and then it almost catches like a bluey purple sheen. That's the glitter. I keep calling it a glitter. I don't actually think it's a glitter. I think it's a shimmer, but it's like that micro fine sort of glitter that, well, sparkly effect, sparkly eyeshadow. So I just want to tap this back on to get a little bit more of it. I feel like we've lost it and that was going to be the main look so let's just add it back in and again we've brought back in a little bit of that warmth and that glitter which is really pretty uh, usually i don't like using fingers for eyeshadows other than toppers or shimmery shades that you can sort of just press over a completed look if i need to use you know a finger with a matte or a traditional shimmer no i'm not a fan but just tapping something over the top of a completed look i'm totally fine with so that's I think that's everything that I'm going to put on today. I'm going to go put some liner on and uh, a little bit more mascara and I'll be back to show you the final look. All right, so I'm back and all I've done is put some uh, brown liner on my waterline, on my tight line. I tried to put only a small amount of liner on my top lash line and just winged it out slightly. It's just a pencil liner because I wanted to keep as much lid space as possible to show like the shimmer. So um, yeah, that's what I decided to do. And I just put a little bit more mascara on. All right, so just on first impressions, the things that I like most about this palette so far, I think are the different tones. I love that there are these cool tones. They work really nicely with the warm tones. Um, you could definitely do an all silver eye and then a pop of gold and it would work really well. So sometimes you find cool sort of clashes with warm, but I feel like the tones they've picked are really smart and they complement each other. And even though I've got uh, like gray on the top and gold on the bottom and that sort of rusty sort of uh, this red shade here on the bottom they sort of harmonize well together so I feel like it's a very harmonious nude palette and doesn't just give you the typical sort of this row that's what I classify as being all typical nude palettes is like champagne and pink and beige no there's more to it there's more depth there's more sort of color tones and they do work really nicely together all right look number two and i've decided to use that top row the only other shade i used was this cream shade here just to set the crease after i put my base on um, but essentially what i've done is i used this more peachier shade in the crease i then applied the pink sort of all over the lid um, i went in with this champagne just dotted it uh, there as like a sort of halo-ish eye. Ran this more um, warmer tone transition shade on the lower lash line. A little bit of pink and a little bit of the champagne. So that's all I've done. Um, it's not very crazy. It's not very special. It's quite lived in. Uh, I probably did this about 10 hours ago. So at least I can tell you that it wears. There's a tiny bit of creasing just along here. I do have oily skin so my eyelids 
generally aren't too oily. Um, if I do wear a base, my eyeshadows look quite fine, but because I do have sort of hooded eyes, sometimes I get a little bit of creasing. So I can only really see that with the metallic shades, there's a little bit of a crease, but the rest of it, it's wearing fine. The look is very pretty. Um, it sort of reminds me a lot of um, looks that you'd get from palettes like the Naked One by Urban Decay, like really sort of basic looks um, but the metallics did apply really nicely the mattes applied really nicely one thing i did want to say as well about these sort of metallic shades is they almost feel a little bit wet so they don't they feel powdery but i think because they're so finely milled um they almost have like a almost like a cream to powder feel to them i don't actually think they are cream to powder but they do give you that sort of feel um but it means they apply really nicely it's almost like they're applying foiled they're definitely not as bold as this gold so they're just in nature by the shade a little bit sheerer but they do create a really pretty look um i have to say though the top row is probably the most basic row out of this whole palette if they got rid of this row i wouldn't even care because the shades that i'm most interested in are on these bottom three rows. So for me, this is sort of like just doing a look for the sake of doing a look. Um, but if you do like these really basic, light, champagne-y, pinky looks, you can achieve that with the top row. I did want to say that these two shades are a little bit too similar. Like they definitely have different undertones, but in practice, like using them, they're so similar. I would have preferred to have seen a completely different shade, even if it was like a peachy sort of pink shade to complement this I think it would have added a different dimension as it was I saw these two shades in the top row and I'm like oh I've got to incorporate both of them into a look they look so similar so yeah peachy in the crease more brownie on the lower lash line but that was simply just to use them both if I just used the one shade in the crease and on the lower lash line I don't think there would have been any like difference in the final look at all. So a little bit of redundancy there already. So this is some well-worn makeup, but you can see the color and the vibrancy is still there. Um, it's still looking pretty and yeah, I don't hate it. All right, look number three is also an end of the day check-in. So this is a, again, a little bit lived in. Um, this is not, there's very little creasing or patchiness at the end of the day. So this is worn really well. Um, I decided to use the second row today. So I wanted to use this row. I was going to use this sparkly shade, but I thought it's similar formula to this one and you probably need some glitter glue. I might just use it as an all over the lid look maybe tomorrow. So I might revisit this shade maybe with some other shades whatever so today i decided to lean into the gold and pair it with these two browns so what i did was i put the gold all over the lid and the lower lash line i blended it out with this shade in the crease so you can see that sort of shadow and on the lower lash line and then what i did with this one was sort of um wing it out a little bit to create a little bit of shape so i'm not wearing any liner on my top lash line or top lid sorry i just decided to use the dark brown to sort of shape it it's a really pretty sort of dark brown it was quite firm um so it was sort of easy to control but it wasn't super super pigmented if that makes sense it's one of those ones that you'd need to apply a small amount and sort of build it up which i'm i'm fine with it for darker colors what i did want to mention is the highlight of this row uh, is definitely the gold it's a really beautiful sort of metallic shade it's very very pigmented easy to apply and really packs a punch but what i love about it is the tone of gold i don't think i've got too many tones quite like this i'd call it like a rich bronzy gold and it pairs really really well with browns a lot of golds that i've come across in past palettes are very yellow gold very light yellow almost um you know like a yellowy champagne color or if they're quite rich golds they're a lot more yellow this one is a lot more bronzy so it is slightly more unique color in my opinion and it's beautiful i love it usually i don't love love gold i don't mind gold as an accent but as an all over the lid color i find it looking a little bit jarring because on me it looks really vibrant yellow this one is more like yeah your bronze sort of coppery gold which i think is really beautiful i thought i'd just pull out the natasha denona gold palette as a bit of a reference so i have the nabla bronzy gold here and i just thought i'd take some other golds just to sort of show you uh in comparison so uh again the nabla one is a lot sort of more orange and a lot more rich toned whereas these are a bit more lighter or um true yellow uh and another example is this one here so they're just a lot lighter so i'll swatch them this is the nabla one so again it's sort of a little bit more orange toned than it is yellow 
And these are some gold shades. Like that to me is like your typical yellow gold, but it's quite different. Hopefully you can see it is quite different. Uh, this is another one from Natasha, Natasha Denona Gold palette. This one has a similar sort of orangey tone, but is a lot lighter. Um, and this one here is just a lot sort of more champagne gold. So these are what I, I'm used to seeing in eyeshadow palettes as golds, but this one is a little bit different. I feel like it works a little bit more organically with the browns in the palette and the nudes. So it's a beautiful accent color. So if you just want to pop a little bit of brightness on your eye, a little bit of metallic color, but as an all over lid color, it's, it's really pretty. I really love it. All right, so here's a look close up. You can see how beautifully vibrant and metallic that gold is without needing to you know, foil the eyeshadow or put it on any special base. I've just used the MAC Paint Pot. It's a beautiful color. And again, this is just a close up of the comparison um, of the Nebula one with some of the Natasha Denona Gold. All right, look number four. And I wanted to mainly test that glittery shade. And I'm just gonna say I'm a little bit disappointed. Um, so this shade here, I wanted to try that all over the lid, which is what I sort of did. I'll turn this down a little bit. So hopefully we can capture it um i did sort of use uh sort of this shade a little bit of that shade and then it was sort of boring so i ended up going in with a little bit of uh this red shade in the outer corner lower lash line and then popping this sort of metallic uh champagne shade on the lower lash line for a bit of brightness so it's a bit of a mishmash of just like some of the mattes and that shade there um when it came to the shimmer so you can definitely see it now we'll zoom in i might zoom in and show it to you and then we can discuss all right so with this look you can see that's those sort of ready brown mattes that i threw in hopefully you can see a bit of the shimmer just on the lid but i do feel like the metallic stands out as being brighter than that sort of glittery shimmery shade so i sort of feel like the effect of that is lost i did originally put this on the primer just sort of like the non-set primer so i didn't put any shadow over it um it did stick but not enough for me to think the effect was worth the hassle so i did put a little bit of glitter glue on my lid so that is it applied over glitter glue it's not very intense it's not very sparkly um it's not very anything really so again i really think the metallics give a more impactful look than that sort of sparkly shade does. It keeps losing focus, sorry about that. But um, yes, yeah, so that's how it looks on the lid, kind of boring. So I wanted to talk about this shade really quickly because uh, definitely I think the formula is more hassle than what it's worth. Uh, hopefully, maybe I'll zoom in again, hang on. I'm not too sure if you can see, but to pick it up, it goes quite chunky. So on a flat brush to pick it up, it does go yeah, it's very, very chunky. And I think that represents how it applies as well. So I don't hate this look by any means, but I did find that it was a little, it sits a little bit chunky on the eye. Of course you can apply it with your finger and sort of smear it out a bit and try to like flatten the chunky parts. But I did find that uh, when I put my pencil liner on, it sort of sat a little bit bumpy. It didn't look very neat. Um, and again, I just don't think it's worth the hassle. I really would have liked any other sort of shade in here than this because it's just something i'm not going to reach for pretty much ever again i can envisage picking it up on a small like firm brush to put on like the inner corner and just sort of like flaking and chunking um, i also feel like the effect of this which is like a pinky sort of champagne i feel like you can just put the pink down layer the champagne over the top and get the same color but a better sort of vibrancy um, yeah i just don't i just don't get it i just don't like it i hopefully you can see how sort of patchy and chunky it is on my finger I wanted to compare it to one of my favorite sort of sparkly eyeshadows uh, that's not a pressed glitter. It's just a sort of shimmer and it's got this beautiful uh, duochrome. So it's gold to pink and it's MAC Stylishly Merry. Um, I think they made this permanent, but you can see the difference in like intensity between the two. And this is a lot smoother. All right. So that's the Nabla chunky one, chunky, chunky. And that's a smooth mac stylishly merry and i'll just swatch them so that is the nabla one and that is the mac one also hopefully you can see that the mac one has this beautiful duochrome that you can capture in a mirror um, whereas the other one is just a flat sort of light peachy champagne pink that mac one is glorious so yeah not my favorite shade not my favorite look um, i think we got there in the end but it was a bit of work and 
it, it just doesn't look great. So um, yeah, I really think they should have put in even another sort of metallic similar to that gold, but a different tone or like a duochrome or something special if they wanted like a pop of special in the palette, but a chunky sheer sparkle that doesn't really do anything for the lid and needs a glitter glue to show up. Like not worth anyone's time. All right, we're back with uh, look number five and this is looking particularly dark and a bit intense on the eyes. I can tell you it's not this bad in person. It's just that it's like 40 degrees Celsius today. So it's very hot. It's very sunny. So I'm sitting in front of a window and everything else is sort of dark. So the lighting is making me look lighter than I am. And it's making the makeup look a little bit darker than it is. Um, but you'll probably be able to see it a little bit better when we zoom in. I did want to point out though, that I am using this row today. So I am using the darker browns. So, you know, that's partly why it looks dark. Um, but I wanted to avoid this sparkly shade today because I've used it before and I might use it again later on. So I mainly just wanted to use this shimmer here and the two mattes. I did also reach into half time up here just to sort of blend it out and um, because it's, yeah, it, otherwise it's just three dark browns. Um, look, this one is all over the lid, just on my normal primer. It looks quite satin. So when you zoom in, you'll see there's not much like metallic shimmer going on. It's a sort of muted shimmer. I don't feel like there needs to be these three shades in the palette because the tones are very, very similar. The colors are very, very similar. Um, one is a little bit warmer red toned. One is a little bit deeper, but I feel like you could have mixed this shade here with that shade to get that shade, if that makes sense. So if you just were a little bit more creative and could just dip your brush into that one and a smidge into that one, you could create a very similar look or if you layered the two. So yeah, I've got a baby with me. Um, so yeah, I just felt like this is a redundant shade that didn't need to be in the look. I did put this in the outer corner and I put this shade on the lower lash line. So that's sort of how I tried to distinguish the two, but they sort of blend together and look very similar. I also feel like because this is not a heavy shimmer, it's like just a um, satin. Yeah, what's mummy talking about? Because it's just more of a satin, I feel like you could have blended it into the crease as well. You can sort of almost mimic um, a matte shade anyway. So I feel like there's a lot of redundancy on that row. Now, what I thought I'd do is um, zoom in and show you the shades just so you can see them. And then I want to use a lighter topper shade over the top to sort of lift this look because when it is a bit too dark, like I feel like it is today, I like to grab a lighter shade and sort of just brighten it. And you could definitely do that with like the champagne in here. You can definitely do it with the gold, but I really want to try that chunky sparkly one that I tried, I think in my last look. So the one on the second row over here, I want to see how that applies because my issue was that it doesn't really grip to the skin. It looks kind of chunky. I do want to see, I want to put it to the test on camera over a dark base and see if it shows up. All right, I've zoomed in and I've turned up the brightness a little bit. So I'm looking really washed out, um, but it is more representative of how the eyeshadow looks in real life. So you can see there is that sort of slight sheen, but I don't feel like it's much different to the color on the lower lash line. So that was that sort of uh, red toned matte, that sienna shade, I think it was. And that is the shimmer. And I feel like you can sort of get the same effect if you just get a little bit of shimmer and, um, you know, blend it out. So I feel like there's a lot of redundancies. Um, and again, can you really tell that I've deepened the outer corner with that dark shade at the end of the row? Not really, if you can see the camera moving, my kid's playing with the tripod, it is what it is. So with a firm brush, I wanna go in with body and soul and I wanna see if I can layer it to just brighten this look a little bit. There we go. So you can see that it does lighten, but it also adds a lot of chunkiness. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I can see that. I really don't think if you have a look that that's done much. I might deepen this a bit so hopefully you can see it a bit better, but I don't feel like that's added much when you sort of blend it out and sort of take away the chunks. It's added, added a little bit of sparkle to the look, but it's so subtle. So if you wanted a little bit more of a sparkly dark brown, you know, okay, maybe just use a sparkly dark brown. 
simple. Uh, but you can layer that lighter shade, but it's very, very sheer. So it doesn't actually add much brightness. All right, I'm back with look number six. And I really like this look. I think it's it, it was easy to do. It's worked out really nicely. Um, the gray tones are really flattering, which is really nice. So I did use this bottom row with a tiny bit of gold. So I set my base in the crease with the cream. Um, I went in all over the lid with this uh, shade here. That was in the outer corner and the lower lash line. I also put this shimmer shade on the lower lash line, but I sort of covered it. So it's disappeared. Um, and then what I did was I mixed these two. So I just tapped my fluffy brush into the sort of white cream shade. And then I tapped it into this sort of gray that's very blue toned. So it is a very blue toned shade. Um, and I just sort of buffed that into the crease to blend it all out. And then I used the black on an angle brush and I just sort of created a winged liner. So I'm not actually wearing any pencil liner on my top lash line. I've got a bit of blue pencil liner in my waterline, which you'll see close up. But yeah, I just used an angle brush and I picked up the black and just sort of stamped it on and created the wing. It was super easy. I'm not an expert in black eyeshadows because I rarely use them. The only time I use black eyeshadows is to sort of set a liner or to diffuse a liner. So if I feel like the wing liner looks too starkly different from my eyeshadow. I sometimes like to press some black eyeshadow on it, buff it out a little bit just to sort of diffuse it. And um, this applied beautifully. So one thing I quite like about it, it's firm enough that it doesn't sort of like rain down your face and disrupt your makeup. Um, so you can put it on your angle brush, press it on, but it's pigmented enough that it doesn't need to be built up much at all. So I didn't need to go over this multiple times to create the black effect. Um, so it was very, very simple, really easy to use. This is the type of black that I would love to use just over the top of liner, just, um, you know, tiny bit in the outer corner just to smoke up a look. Um, it was easy to control, pigmented, um, and it sort of just did its job. It wasn't messy, it wasn't hard, it wasn't scary. It was a really nice black. So I like all shades on this row. All right, then the last thing I did, of course, I put some blue sort of teal liner on my lower lash line. I did get that gold shade and just run it a little bit on the in the inner tear duct and under um, the inner corner of the lower lash line. So I mainly did that because I thought if I put like the champagne shade on the inner corner, it would sort of look a little bit frosty and I don't like frosty makeup. So adding a little bit of warmth, um, I quite like the contrast and it neutralizes the look a little bit, but also it demonstrates that you can use the gold and the sort of gray shades together and they do work quite organically together. So that's a look. I put a bit of mascara. I have noticed that none of these looks in this video have any lashes. I know a lot of people have um, issues with YouTubers sticking lashes on everything to make looks look good, but I feel like this is a really wearable, simple look that was easy to achieve. All right, I could very easily conclude my review here, but I really do wanna go in again just with one last look using this shade with whatever I feel. So I'm gonna review the look that I did uh, first up using this to avoid using the same surrounding shades. Um, and then I'll be back tomorrow with that and then we'll call it done. All right, I'm back with look number seven and this is the second time I'm recording this because I realized my camera shat itself. Something happened, footage was lost. So hopefully I don't skim over things too fast, but I have said this before. Anyway, this is the final look that I've decided to do. And like I said yesterday, I wanted to delve back into this shade here and just see how it goes with some of the other shades. Now I realized looking back at the footage that I paired this with the sort of grays and the gold. So I feel like the only place I can really go is to sort of tone it down and make it quite nude. So what I decided to do today was apply it just over a normal base. I didn't put any glitter glue, nothing special. And then I blended it out with this shade up here and put this shade on the outer corner, top and bottom lash line. And I also used this as a liner with an angle brush, similar to how I used the black yesterday. So I like the look. It's really, really simple. I will zoom in and I'll also show you this pan because it's looking a bit jacked up after just two uses, which 
concerns me a little bit, but let's look at the look. All right, hopefully you can see that just on a normal primer, so I did tap a little bit of the shadow with my finger at one point and blended it out um, with a brush. You can see it's very twinkly and really pretty. I do like this look, um, even though I do like the bolder element of when you apply this over a glitter glue. I think it's very, very pretty just applied over a normal base. It's got a nice amount of like light catching shimmer. You can see it almost has a cool toned silvery sparkle element to it. It effectively looks like a soft brown with um, a sheer sort of sparkle topper over the top, which is really, really pretty. I also like the browns. Uh, you can see this cool tone brown sort of gives a bit of smokiness to the eye really nicely, blended really easily, applied really nicely. Um, and then you can also see that when I stamped the um, shadow over the top, it created a nice liner effect and you can see sort of the contrast between blending out that shade and building it up. So you can do both, you know, good, great. So uh, let's show you the pan. All right, hopefully you can see that this is a bit of a messed up pan. There's like chunks taken out. There was one time where the middle of the pan sort of sealed up. So it created a sort of um, layer where I had to sort of dig into it with a small detail brush to uh, sort of lift the product and make it usable. So it is a little bit of a problematic formula in terms of being able to pick it up easily and neatly from the pan. All right, time to conclude what I think about this palette. And I definitely think there are some strong points and there are some weak points. And the weak points do make it hard for me to be like, yeah, this is something I really, really recommend over other nude palettes in the market because I feel like it's just gonna come down to what you're happy to work with, if that makes sense. So when it comes to the shades, I have said this before at the start of the review, I really like the shades. I love that there's neutrals, there's some warms, there's some cools. I particularly like that they've added in the cools and they've gone quite cool. They haven't pulled back and just done a slight cool shade. They've really gone there. I do think that they could have delved further into the warm and the cool to make this a little bit more diverse um, because I do feel like there are some double ups. So just looking at this here, um, those two, this one is essentially a lighter version of that one. This one and that one, they do have different undertones, but they're quite similar um, and like, you're gonna use them in the same way. I just found that I was sort of alternating between the two, just which one do I feel like using today? I also found that this row is very repetitive as well. All the tones, like if I tilt it there, they all have the same undertone. It's just that they have different finishes. There's two that have the same finish. One is just like a lighter version of that. I also feel like you could have removed one of these and just thrown in a, like a bronze with a, old gold greeny tone, whatever. Something different to this sort of ready shade, which is a very pretty brown, but it, there's a lot of it in a fairly sort of small palette. So I feel like it's, yeah, it's a little bit too repetitive. So I definitely think they could have cut out maybe three or four shades comfortably and still had the same, the palette would have been able to give you the same effect on the eye. Um, and I think by doing that, they could have added in a few more shades that made this a little bit more, I don't know, unique compared to other palettes on the market. Like I would have loved to have seen next to the gold, a beautiful mustard because mustards can look gorgeous with nude looks. It's a sort of warm tone nude that a lot of brands don't delve into, but it's surprisingly flattering. I also feel it's a little bit frustrating when they throw in this sort of like goldy, color and they're just like pair that with brown like that's your only option is to pair it with brown or gray and you kind of go well can I find something else that works harmoniously with the gold like anyway so I would have loved to have gone mustard here and then maybe on this row I would have liked them to transition into the cool um, a bit earlier I feel like you know there is a bottom row that is cool but when you take away the sort of off-white cream and the black you only really have two strong cool shades in this palette. So I really would have loved them to have thrown maybe a taupe or something on this row just to add a little bit like gradiating to the cool, if that makes sense. So I feel like what they've done is sort of their comfort zone is the neutrals and they've just sort of repeated that time and time again, but they really should have gone into the fun tones of the warm and the cool 
to make this a little bit more unique. When it comes to the formula, I think it's a bit of a hit and miss. I think there's some really beautiful formulas in here. My particular favorite are those sort of metallic shades. Um, I love these the most because they're the tones that I go for over a pink. These shades, even though they're a powder, they apply almost like they feel like they're a a cream it blends on really beautifully it is quite bold um, it can be quite opa opaque i'm sure if you apply this with a fluffy brush you can get a nice sheer amount of shimmer as well but what i love this for is like just a, put a little bit on the lid just to like brighten a look or the inner corner just to lift a look they're really really beautiful formulas um and again you don't have to like dig into them to make them work you don't need to layer them over something funny to make them work they just work on their own so i would have loved to have seen more of these because in my opinion these two sparkly shades even though they can look pretty i don't feel like they're shades that i can be bothered reaching for, if that makes sense. I would have preferred to have seen a brown tone in this formula and had a beautiful sort of metallic-y um, brown tone that I can just apply over the lid, have it like done really fast. It almost can be a one and done eyeshadow and um, not really have to worry about it being chunky or not sticking to the lid because the base isn't sticky enough and all this kind of stuff. So I really would have loved to have maybe seen them um, put more of these metallics in this palette i also really love the mattes i think they're they're not like the most amazing buttery smooth mattes in the world but they do the job they blend nicely they've got a nice amount of pigment they're not so soft and pigmented that you're scared of applying too much and it's sort of overtaking the look it doesn't sort of rain down your face with fallout which a lot of really highly pigmented mattes sometimes do because to get the pigmentation they have to press them quite softly so you pick up a lot on the brush these are a little bit firmer but they or some of them are firm some of them are quite soft um, but they do a really nice job i love that you can sort of get the pigmentation by packing them on you can blend them out you can stamp them on as a liner they work really nicely i've heard some people say that nabla is the bee's knees they're the most amazing formula and then i've heard other people say i don't understand the hype of nabla and look i'm sort of in between but for people that have never tried nabla eyeshadow quality i feel like it's one step above urban decay it's not like the most amazing formula in the world but it's very usable it's quite reliable um and it's yeah it's quite easy to work with so it's not like it's not going to blow you away with pigment um there's not going to be amazing sort of sparkly shades here that you just go wow oh my god i just how did i ever live live without this they're not that type of eyeshadow in my opinion maybe for some people they are because i know it comes down to um your body chemistry and how well certain formulations work on you but for me personally i feel like it's just yeah one step up from your Too faced or your urban decay um, and i feel like it's not so much the quality that makes nabla eyeshadow palettes in my opinion interesting it's the way that they mix a lot of different formulas in their palettes and they often do go somewhere a little bit unique with the color story. They almost do like a nude with a twist. Um, and I feel like there wasn't much of a twist here and they did go places with your traditional shimmer, your interesting metallics, your sparkles, your mattes, but I don't feel like all of them hit the mark for me. So even though I do think this is a nice palette, it's something that I liked all the looks I created with. I do feel like if I continued creating looks, it would start getting quite repetitive because the things that really distinguish the looks was whether you use the silvers or the gold the rest sort of all muddled into one sort of look so i i do feel like it's a little bit limited in that regard so when it comes down to whether or not i would recommend this palette i think it just depends it's definitely not a palette where i'm like you have to have this and it's the most amazing nude eyeshadow palette and the formula every shade works perfectly and it's got everything you need and it's the one and done it's the only palette you need that's not the case. Um, I think there are definitely flaws with it. There are definitely limitations. And so I think it comes down to whether or not you love Nabla formula and what you think of the color story. I will reach for this because I think this gold is superb. It's one of my favorite golds from my collection. I love this gray. It's a really unique, beautiful, almost like a, I don't know, there's some blue element to it. It's really, really beautiful. But because I do love a bit of sparkle, um, if these shades here were top notch, this would have made me come back more and more um, and use it more and more. But as it is, 
they sort of are a little bit of a deterrent for me because I feel like even though I'm more than happy to apply them over a glitter glue, I'm, I'm fine with that. I feel like the chunkiness of this one and the pans sort of mess up with that one, um, like the fact that it sort of seals over and you need to sort of chip away at it, it just doesn't make me want to use it, if that makes sense. So these two are sort of let down, the rest of it are really pretty. So yeah, I like the palette, but I don't, like I'm not obsessed with the palette, if that makes sense. It's gonna be something that's gonna sit on my desk. I'm gonna keep reaching for it happily. I'm gonna keep using that champagne and that gold and be like, that metallic formula is beautiful. And then I'm gonna sort of reach for the sparkles and be like, oh, just wish you just gave me a little bit more. All right, so that was my first uh, one week, one palette review for 2021. Uh, let me know if you've tried this palette, what you think of it. Let me know if you've tried Nab Nabla formula and what you think of it. Yeah, let me know what your favorite look was out of the seven and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. I can't really use that topper body and soul. Yeah, we've got a baby that is trying to grab the lens. Chicky Muffin, what are you doing? What are you doing? You want to be in it, don't you? What are you doing? You're like, what, mummy, why are you wearing such dark makeup? Oh, oh. all right, you.